I'm Scott Holmes, the manager of the Environmental Health Division with the Lincoln-Lancaster County Health Department. Today we're going to talk about West Nile virus and how you can fight the bite to prevent getting this illness. We'll also provide accurate information about West Nile virus, talk to four people who have had this disease, and also provide you information on how you can reduce the number of mosquitoes in your own backyard and neighborhood. We will also talk to Cheryl Lockett, a disease control nurse with the health department, who will share information about what kind of symptoms you might have if you get this illness and how the disease is transmitted. Since West Nile virus has been active in Lancaster County, there's been many cases and several deaths. Symptoms vary from very mild to very severe. More mild symptoms include body aches, headaches, fever, um, nausea, vomiting, um, sometimes a rash or swollen lymph nodes. In some cases, even mild symptoms can last from days to months to years. More severe symptoms include uh, severe headache with a stiff neck, high temperature, confusion, muscle paralysis, and numbness. Many people don't get sick after being bitten by a mosquito that's infected with West Nile virus, but we all need to consider the risk. In some cases, neurological symptoms have been known to be long-lasting. It is important for people to take action to prevent getting bit by mosquitoes. Leon Marquardt from the Environmental Health Division will now share ways that you can reduce your exposure to mosquitoes and take actions in your own neighborhood to prevent mosquitoes from breeding. Some of the ways that people can avoid getting mosquito bites is to use some simple precautionary measures. One of the easiest ways is just to avoid the times of the day when mosquitoes are most active in the early morning and early evening hours of dusk and dawn. This is the time when the female mosquito is out seeking a blood meal. If you are going to be out during these times of the day, it's recommended that you wear long sleeve shirts and long pants. You want to cover up, but keep in mind that your clothing must be of a thick enough weave to prevent the mosquitoes from penetrating the fabric you are wearing. One way that people can avoid getting bit by mosquitoes is the use of an insect repellent. To properly use an insect repellent, you just want to apply a very light application. Heavier applications do not necessarily mean improved protection time. You want to avoid applications in the soft tissue areas of your nose, mouth, and eyes. Children need special attention when applying insect repellents. It is best to have an adult apply any insect repellent to children so they don't have it in their hands and accidentally get it in their eyes or mouth. More information about using repellents can be found on the Health Department's website which includes a link to the Centers for Disease Control website, which has additional information. Homeowners with water features such as waterfalls, fountains, flower gardens, and fish ponds need to keep that water moving to prevent mosquitoes from laying their eggs in that environment. Homeowners can also treat the water with an environmentally friendly product or add predatory fish to control mosquitoes. Alleys can be a prime breeding ground and you may not even be aware of that. Containers such as buckets, tires, other man-made vessels can hold mosquitoes for long periods of time, long after wetlands and roadside ditches have dried up. In drought conditions, these containers can breed mosquitoes all summer long. You may not notice as many mosquitoes, but the mosquitoes that are out are very capable of carrying disease. Keeping vegetation to a minimum is also important. Cut grass and weeds because during the daytime heat, these are places mosquitoes like to retreat to escape the heat. And when the sun goes down, it's just a short distance over the fence to where you and your family may be. One of the health department's concerns is standing water where mosquitoes can breed. John Chess is going to explain more about that problem in our community. Well, we provided you some suggestions that you can do as a homeowner for helping to stop the spread of West Nile virus uh, around your house as far as prevention of breeding grounds. We would ask your help in one more uh, area to prevent West Nile virus. We'd ask you to turn in any standing water that you see. The standing water should be there for at least for a week, should be of depth three, four, five inches. We can find the standing water on vacant lots, in tire ruts, or in boat tarps, garbage can lids. So if you see any standing water, we'd ask you to turn this into the health department. This will help us fight the spread of West Nile virus. Thank you. Here are four stories.
from people in our community who have had West Nile virus. And the first inkling that something was wrong, I got a full body rash. Well, not a full, I'd say a full torso rash from neck to, sh neck to waist. Out boating, at the end of the night, we went in, my dad went to get the pickup, my mom and I stayed out on the boat, and the mosquitoes were terrible. We were swatting and everything. We had been in the water. We didn't have bug spray on. We were actually joking that probably one of us would get West Nile. We were out on the Platte River camping, and we had bug spray on and all of our protection. It was about dusk, and I actually do remember getting bit by a mosquito and thought, oh, I hope I don't. I hope that's not the one. I was out mowing my yard at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and got bit one time. Um, about three weeks after that, I was sitting at a coffee house with some friends and the entire world started spinning. Uh, they took me home, called my wife, and for about the next two weeks, I don't remember much at all. It was about a two-week period between the time I got bit, I think, and I got really sick. From then on, I was on pain medication. I lost, my face got paralyzed. I couldn't eat, I couldn't swallow. They did three surgeries on my stomach trying to stop the pain. They couldn't, they put a, they, um, so I was continually on some really large pain medication. They inserted a feeding tube because I couldn't eat. I lost 45 pounds. After the third week, um, of being told, you know, well, it's not, that's probably not West Nile. It's just a summer vibe. I, I went in and just said, I really, really want my blood taken. And it's not even for, I knew that there was really nothing they could do. Like there's no magic pill or anything they could give me, but just the, it did calm my, you know, just, okay, I know. I couldn't stand up or sit up by myself. I just had to lay in the bed. Sunday night I, is when I lost memory. The last thing I remember is telling, um, my mom, I didn't think I was going to make it, and that I loved her. Sorry. <laughs> Three weeks later, I started getting um, vertigo, a lot of vertigo, a lot of dizziness, a lot of headaches, and flu-like symptoms. Um, the thing I remember the most is that I, I couldn't let anybody touch me. It just ached no matter what, where they touched me. It just ached a lot. It was felt like the worst case of the flu I'd ever had. Every muscle hurt. Anytime I tried to move, it was like somebody was driving a nail through my head. I couldn't shut my eyes. They were actually taping my eyes shut at night. I couldn't blink. They had to um, moisturize my eyes. I couldn't shower without goggles on and help. They took a test here at Lincoln and said that they were pretty sure it was West Nile. It came back on Wednesday. By Thursday morning, I started to regain memory and stuff, or at least come back and start talking. They told me I had to eat. I hadn't ate anything since that Monday before when I started getting headaches. I lost about 45 pounds in the hospital in four days. It was real stressful, and I would suggest wearing insect repellent. I still do, even though they say once you're bit, you're immune. I don't want to take the chance again. The symptoms today, after three years, is the, the weakness will come back, the, the dizziness and the fuzzy headness comes back. Because of all the neurological damage, I was unable to read. I had to teach myself how to read. I had to condition my eye muscles back so they were normal. I couldn't drive. I couldn't walk. Um, I couldn't write. I had to teach myself how to write using the little kid books. I yell at my wife, my mother, my nieces and nephews, and everybody I know that if you're going to be outside around mosquitoes, don't get bit. It, it, it is a nasty thing. You, people don't want this. Do be extra careful at dawn and dusk. I mean, that is when they're out the most. Because even with insurance, it's an expensive disease. It is hard to recover from, and you may never recover from it. I wish I would have had it on that night because it was just too much for me and my family to go through. Remember, fight the bite. Wear mosquito repellent when you're outside. Avoid being outside during dawn and dusk. And if you have to be out during those times, wear mosquito repellent and wear long sleeves and long pants.